Vamos a pasar ahora a una mesa eh, redonda, donde vamos a hablar, como veis ahí en el título, Arte y Naturaleza en Europa. Y realmente, bueno, pues eh, voy a plantear una serie de cuestiones que las voy a realizar en, en inglés, eh, pero bueno, las voy a traducir también al castellano, y que son cuatro temas. ¿no? Os voy a hacer una serie de preguntas para que surjan, pero a mí, más que plantear a lo mejor una mesa redonda donde cada uno de, de nosotros ¿no? pues estemos hablando realmente de determinados temas, creo que puede ser mucho más rico porque disponemos de un tiempo bastante importante que una vez que saquemos estos temas, pues sobre todo pues que dar, dar la voz a, a todos los que estamos aquí reunidos, ¿no? porque seguro que muchas veces surgen pues muchas preguntas interesantes de vosotros. Entonces, los cuatro temas que querría sacar son los siguientes. ¿no? Por un lado, el tema de cómo se está trabajando ahora, el primer tema, cómo se está trabajando ahora los temas relacionados con arte y naturaleza desde el punto de vista de la sensibilidad. Entonces, voy a traducir. In the, in the last decades, a change has been observed with respect to the sensitivity towards nature. How do you feel this evolution in the artists working at your project? How could we define these changes? Do you understand me? Okay, perfecto. El segundo tema es el tema de los espacios eh, periféricos, ¿no? de la periferia. Es decir, que estamos hablando de cuatro proyectos con unas geografías eh, pues que son diferentes. Pues hablamos de Basivier como un espacio que está totalmente en la ruralidad, ¿verdad? está en un lago, está en un bosque. Luego hablamos de otro tipo de proyectos, como pues, por ejemplo pueden ser los que están en Covilla o este que está aquí en Huesca. El de Huesca al Cedam mezcla ambas cosas, está en una pequeña ciudad, pero tiene una colección también como Basivier, en este caso por toda la provincia de Huesca. Pero también compartimos con, la, con el caso de Covilla ¿no? pues el hecho de estar en una ciudad pequeña que a veces es periférico. ¿no? Y, por último, está el caso de Turín, que ya hablamos de una gran ciudad de más de 800.000 habitantes, un millón con todos los alrededores. Y, bueno, entonces, la segun, el segundo tema es Our spaces share peripheral spaces not only in the cultural sector, but also geographically. In a region, or as in your case, in the case of the, of the pub, in a neighborhood that is not in the city center. Is this an obstacle or is it an opportunity to our projects? El tercer punto, el tercer tema que quería sacar para que lo debatiéramos aquí, es el tema de la nueva Bauhaus europea, donde estamos hablando de una conexión pues, más cercana a lo que es la habitabilidad. ¿no? Y como os he dicho esta mañana, los principios de esta iniciativa de la Comisión Europea es intentar transformar, aunque bueno, como también habéis visto, eh, se basa mucho en cuestiones muy ligadas a, a lo arquitectónico, pero no solo. Aquí se ha hablado, habéis visto, de naturaleza, se ha hablado del papel de los artistas, que es lo que intenta también fomentar. ¿no? Entonces, se habla también de la asequibilidad, como habéis visto. Entonces, eh, New European Bauhaus aims to support a closer connection with nature based on habitability, affordability in more beautiful, more sustainable and more inclusive spaces. How could our projects contribute to this issue? Yes? Okay. Perfect. And the last one, el último, es sobre todo eh, cuando estamos hablando de un tema que es también muy importante, ¿no? De la emergencia. Ah, okay, perfect. <laughs> I can repeat. No, no, the last one. Last okay. One. And the last one? Esta cuestión about de bueno es el tema relacionado con la emergencia climática, ¿no? Y que muchas veces eh, todo este tipo de centros, como estamos viendo, y todos los proyectos que aquí estáis representados, porque realmente, pues tanto en la parte de arriba como en la parte que estamos aquí abajo, estoy viendo muchos proyectos que ya estáis trabajando en arte y naturaleza, hay festivales, hay iniciativas que, que van surgiendo en este tema, pero que muchas veces estamos trabajando, aunque intentamos conectarnos y hacemos un esfuerzo muy grande ¿no? pues por conocernos, ¿no? pues estoy viendo aquí a las personas de conversaciones con el paisaje, a las personas de arte y gabarras, ¿no? Estoy viendo hacer Cerclo Patrimonio y otros muchos proyectos pues que estamos intentando ahí trabajar en común, pero realmente eh, la pregunta sería, ¿realmente se necesita una mayor cooperación, una mayor coordinación? 
¿qué pensamos de todo esto en una conexión continental, digamos, ¿no? en un ámbito europeo? Artistic projects that reflect about nature and landscape are expanding in Europe in connection with the climate emergency. However, sometimes it is difficult to find these initiatives to know artists involved in. Would a network be necessary on a continental scale? Hmm? It's clear? Yes, I think. More or less. <laughs> Entonces, bueno, con estos cuatro temas podéis abrir eh, vosotros. You can open the, the, the reflections about uh, these, these items, but I invite to you to, to start with the with question, ¿no? Que podemos empezar cuando queráis y, bueno, pues como estamos en esta Torre de Babel, pues entre todos podemos hablar, obviamente, eh, como queramos en, en, nuestras, en nuestras lenguas y, bueno, intentaremos traducir entre todos, ¿vale? Eso, que estamos aquí, personas con un montón de lenguas. Entonces, bueno, pues, pues adelante. Queremos empezar, por ejemplo, por el, tema, por el primer tema, ¿no? Eh, ¿Estáis percibiendo una evolución en la mentalidad de, de los artistas que están trabajando hoy en día con temas de arte y naturaleza? Es decir, ¿existe una mayor sensibilidad que respecto a hace muchos años? Es decir, eh, how do you feel this evolution eh, with the sensitivity of the arts eh, in the artists eh, which are working in your project? We can start. Mm -hmm. um, I can start, maybe. Yeah. Is this Can you hear me okay? Yes, okay. Uh, yeah, I would say there's definitely been a, a strong evolution in the way artists interact with nature in their projects, consider nature. Um, I mean, if you, if you imagine even just the, the grand gestures of land art in the 60s would be completely unthinkable today. I don't think any artist would really propose a project that has such an environmental impact and also imposes such a unidirectional vision on the planet. I think artists, so many artists now are working in a much more maybe collaborative manner with, with the environment, with natural processes. And you know, if they are integrating um, natural elements into their work, I think there's also a space that is, or an invitation for natural processes to do their own thing and a recognition that we are not the most intelligent forces on the planet, or, the, or that there are other forms of intelligence that might exceed what we know and what we can do. Um, so I think there's, yeah, a recognition that we are not the only ones on the planet, and that any art, artistic creation that is addressing environmental is issues has to take that into consideration. And I think, I mean, there's an element perhaps of, there's almost a trend now, because so many artists are working with environmental themes, but that's also a, a reflection of a larger societal awareness of the climate disaster and the fact that we need to contend with this. And art is also a way to potentially open new perspectives on how we can relate to the planet and how we can move beyond this over-consuming capitalist cycle. So that's just an initial sort of preamble. <laughs> Something else? Yeah. Eh, io posso dire di un esempio eh, di una pratica artistica recente. No? Eh, Fernando Garcia Dorì, che abbiamo citato molte volte, un altro artista spagnolo che è stato più volte ospite al PAV, eh, non, 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 por non ha portato elementi vegetali, installazioni, nulla, se non una ricerca fatta insieme ad altri artisti, perché si sta parlando di un collettivo, quindi questo è un altro elemento importante, cioè gli artisti anche che eh, lavorano col vivente, con, con la natura, si riuniscono in collettivi. Infatti questo lavoro stava dentro la mostra Sustaining Assembly, che era proprio una mostra di collettivi, che è un trend molto importante in questo momento, anche a documenta, quindi ci, ci sarà un collettivo di curatori, c'è cioè il Turner Prize, sono, di nuovo hanno premiato un collettivo di artisti. Quindi Fernando Garcia Dori, tornando a lui, ha fatto tutta una ricerca su un villaggio eh, che stanno recuperando, non ricordo se sulle Asturie o da qualche altra parte, mi pare sulle Asturie, 
e, e, e stanno facendo anche un'indagine sulla natura, cioè la natura non è tutta eh, mh, perfetta. Perché? Perché in quel territorio hanno fatto una piantagione di eucalipti e le eucalipti non, non, non sono delle piante, cioè sono delle piante non autoctone, sono piante che sono state appunto coltivate diciamo, per estrarre carta, per questioni economiche e si sono sparse in tantissime, arrivano dall'Australia le eucalipti fondamentalmente. Quindi l'eucalipto non è una pianta che eh, come dire, funziona dal punto di vista dell'ambiente generale, perché assorbe tantissima acqua. Eh, ha bisogno di nutrimento e uccide diciamo, tutta la, la biodiversità che c'è attorno e in più è molto infiammabile e quindi ecco, tutti questi ragionamenti che sono delle ricerche eh, possono essere una produzione artistica oggi quindi in evoluzione anche rispetto alla land art o alla art in nature e così via in, in No, between, as you said, with the, can, with can the I, land art, no, I think. I don't know if I speak in English, if, but... Yes, yes. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, but no, no, I no think the, 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 the things are changed um, since we uh, take conscience that we are nature also. We are also part of the nature. And nature is not uh, separated from us. And artists like Joseph Beuys have worked a lot of this notion. Uh, but uh, in the contemporary times, the, the people who work with uh, living uh, material, like uh, in uh, uh, Odieta, as uh, showed, uh, but also the, th the people who work with the genetic um, manipulation and uh, not I think th th this relation this sin poetic relation with nature uh, coexists with the the, the, the um, opposition of uh, uh, civilization and nature that has been uh, the one of the arguments of the romantic era but Uh, we, we can also see in the works like, uh, of artists like um, Tadashi Kawamata, I don't know if you know, Kawamata is, a, 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 um, is an artist from Japan who worked with uh, uh, materials recollected from the seas, for instance, pl uh, plastics, and, and work with the community to uh, um, discuss the, 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 the pollution and uh, this uh, envir environmental uh, crisis. But also, in, it coexists with other, uh, other um, um, ways, like David Hockney is a, a British artist who returns to the landscape. And He has said in a few, days, a few months ago a uh, proposal of the, um, the exhibition he has um, now in Paris. It's not nature, it's not landscape uh, who has become boring, it's painting who has become boring. And we do not change the nature, we, do, we should uh, uh, change the way we relate with nature. I don't know, it, there are three vectors uh, for a non-resposta uh, uh, to, <laughs> to, to Robert. For, yes. for example, here at, at the Sedan, we are, we, we are seeing that uh, the projects uh, presented by the artists are projects more and more ephemeral, no? And this is the question. And, utilization uh, of the, the use, using the, some mat, many materials that uh, we can find at the, at the nature and an evolution very, very, very ecological. No? This is uh, the, the question for, for us. And 
I, uh, I would like to... to eh, bueno, os querría decir, ahora me paso, a que preguntéis también alguna cuestión, que lo podéis hacer en castellano o en catalán, yo la traduciré y, y adelante. Así que podéis levantar la mano. David, te veo con ganas. No. <risa> no. Bueno, ¿alguna pregunta de este primer bloque? ¿Sin miedo? ¿No? Bueno. Pues pasamos al segundo. Venga, vamos a salir antes, ¿eh? Como sigamos así. <risa> bueno, es, estábamos hablando, como decíamos, de, de espacios, bueno, pues que están trabajando en diferentes contextos, ¿no? Pues eso. Eh, this is a, a handicap or an opportunity if we, if we are talking about eh, our centers, our initiatives are in a rural area or we are in a urban area or uh, a peripheral area, uh, for example, as the Sedan. But we know that, for example, the, the Sedan is in the periphery of the, of the contemporary art, no? because it's art and nature very, very specially. But also, we are not very close to Madrid or Barcelona. We are in the, in the medium, no? but uh, this is a, a problem. Also, uh, to what is your opinion about it? It is a handicap, no, or an opportunity uh, to live in urban areas, rural areas, for developing this type of, of projects, this kind. Soft. No, uh, for us, it's, I don't know. It's, it's, it's like that. <laughs> we are in the city, in the middle, not in the middle of, but. Uh, not yeah we, we born there and um, we we make a, a new piece of of, of the city so um, every everything is fast at pub um, in a weekend we can we can do a workshop or or um, more or less two two three three days so is a, is a special kind to to learn also uh, urban, um, quite urban. Uh, we are, we don't have any any spaces for the um, uh, residents, you know. Also, so um, the program are not not fast, but uh, we hope longer than than possible. No? Uh, maybe we, we, we think about uh, a process, so we can we can do a, a, like a, a residence, but in in, a, in, a, in long time. Uh, and this residence is not a real residence inside the place, but um, the artists, the young artists, the students uh, of fine arts, and so on, they ca um, came uh, maybe in, in a, for the workshop or for the conference, for the lecture, for the, and at the end, they made a, 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 a learning training, you know, in one, one year, maybe, and this is a, a, a urban <laughs> residence, <laughs> uh, how but, we but can you, say, we you, can do. You connect the pub, for example, with the rural areas, or for example, with, Another initiatives and other projects, uh, for example, from artists who are working at the rural area and uh, after this uh, residence uh, will, will make a, an, ex an exhibition into the path or, or not? Because no, we, we the, have a, a, sorry, and your space is a limitation for working, for example, with uh, rural landscapes. Mm, there, there are some project, no, not one. There is the free uh, school of uh, garden. This is one, and this is a real garden, uh, like uh, not vegetable, but uh, I, I don't know in English uh, the um, the the plant uh, the plants uh, with the smell to, to 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 do something more. No, uh, we can do soap uh, with them or maybe other products. No, and so uh, this is a, a long-term uh, project and uh, at Urban be, because uh, uh, yes, there is there are some steps that uh, we propose in the program. 
and uh, this is followed by uh, artists and also, yeah, the first of, of all, uh, this, this project was uh, start, uh, started by um, My Villages, that is a collective, uh, European, like a European collective, but uh, first of all, um, Vapke Fenstra, that uh, is from Holland, and, uh, and yes, and th this project, I think, I think that is urban, but uh, also, uh, yeah, long-term uh, residence, we can say. But this is not the, the, the only one, yeah. Okay. And for you, Francisco? Um, Alexandra, there is a limitation uh, at your project for approaching the art contemporary to, to the people? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. For me, uh, I don't think I live in, in the periphery, because for me, the region I live <laughs> is the center. Yeah. And the, the, the problem is not mine. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is relative. And um, I think people who, who, who came to live in, or, or, or to, for option, they live in, in the, the more, uh, in Spanish, in regiones descongestionadas. I have li lived in Lisbon from several years and Quimba. And now in my, in my life, I have time for, for things I, I don't have when I was lived in the big city. And there are some examples in my region that are well, uh, uh, well known in all world uh, artists like Maria João Pires, I don't know if you, is a pianist. Uh, who, who acts in the most uh, famous um, auditoriums all over the world, but he lives in, in uh, near us because he, he searches for silence. And perhaps th people who don't uh, appreciate silence don't want to live in, in these regions, but perhaps there are other people and we can uh, design uh, um, um, universal um, um, proposal because there are different people. And this hegemonic uh, uh, way of living uh, should be con uh, contradicted with other forms of alternative living, yeah. ways of living. And I think artists, not all, but some of them, want to have more time and to have a more um, um, direct relation with the, the, the ecosystem and the territory. For, for me, it's not a limitation. And uh, I think well, uh, another artist, uh, uh, my friend, who came from, uh, from Hamburg, from Germany, and he had found a, 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 a place, like a, an atelier. Uh, she called Atelier Temos Tempo. Uh, this uh, uh, um, studio, we have time. And she, she wants to, to live in a, a slow, a more slow way, and this is not for me. Is not an, uh, a problem. Opportunity. Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, for you. Yeah, I, I would second what Francisco was saying about periphery and center being very much a relative relationship, and depending on where you are, is perhaps the center mm -hmm. <laughs> or not. Uh, but I think there's also perhaps a line of thinking that almost. Uh, diminishes that difference because everything is so globally connected and we all have the internet, let's say, um, and we're all aware of current affairs, but I think in the reality there's still psychological, psychologically, geographically, physically 
spiritually, there is still a big difference between living on a remote island somewhere and living in the center of Paris, let's say. Um, but I think for me, where I am now at Vassivière, and also where I was previously, which was a remote island in the North Atlantic in Canada, uh, there are distinct advantages in being in, in this place that's eccentric to, let's say, big urban centers or places that are known to be the site for contemporary art. Um, and on the one hand, I think it's the capacity to recognize things that are very specific to those remote or isolated places. Uh, I was speaking earlier of the specificity of, of place and that idea of being able to recognize, let's say, different forms of knowledge in relation to landscape or um, different sort of material practices that have existed in a specific place. Um, for example, where I lived before, there was there's a whole history of boat building that is super specific to that, that island. And there's even, within the province of Newfoundland, there's all of this language which relates directly to, to the landscape and to the sea and to the changing seasons and how people interact um, with that landscape and how they derive their living from it too as, as fishermen or whatever. So that's on one hand. But then on the other hand, I think the advantage of being in a place where there aren't many, many other distractions, let's say, is that you have the possibility to build much closer relationships with those who are really of that place too. And you can build a deeper connection between, let's say, the artist projects that you do or the exhibitions that you show or any sort of programming that you do. And then people who are, are, are also you know, members of that community because they're there, they're not going anywhere. And if you have a sustained approach to your programming that, that encompasses them as much as possible, then, then you do have this capacity to really, I think, create a rich relationship with, with, with your community. Okay, thank you. Uh, thinking about the new European uh, Bauhaus, it's, uh, it has a, a very closer relationship between living in urban areas, living in rural areas, but the most important thing is uh, um, developing, developing more uh, spaces more with more habitability and affordability and beauty. No? Uh, what can I do to, to improve the public spaces and the, bueno, and the, the, the cities, uh, the villages where, where we, we are living no? in relation with the new European Bauhaus. What is your opinion after this, this, this meeting today? What is your opinion about the new European Bauhaus and how we, we can improve uh, our spaces with more inclusive, with more beauty, more beautiful? Mm -hmm. In relation to... Yeah, more, more radical, I think, more... more uh, uh, critics, no, uh, more experiment, experimental, like this. Um, I think the uh, yes, our our um, method, I would say um, learning method. We can see, we can we can say, um, is uh, based on uh, experimental way, no, in in, in experimental way. So we can uh, we can do outdoor education first of all. So we, know, we uh, can um, know, know, know the, the, the name of plants, um, like as, as said uh, by uh, Gilles Clément, no? he, uh, he said uh, so many times, mu we must uh, know the, the no name of the plants because uh, it's their uh, right. No, if I if I know you, Roberto, I can uh, I can uh, tell I can tell you for far, no, Roberto, <laughs> and you can turn and and rec recognize me and no, is yeah. is a relation. Mm -hmm. So this is about outdoor education. No, everything uh, will be known in in this in this way. Um, also the, the time, no? the change in time, and, and so on. So, um, to have a, a, pl a big place, a green place, uh, a, a natural born no? a place, uh, also in, in the city, for, in, in our case, uh, I think is, uh, is, is, uh, yes, is another way to, to learn. 
No? We saw, yeah. we saw uh, uh, with the, the, the school uh, uh, group that, that come uh, every day at Bav, the, the, the changement, you know, we can see uh, the, the, I would say, uh, the, when, when you are, la meraviglia, I don't yeah. remember. Uh, what you say, no? To, to, uh, when someone uh, has, uh, yes, see the meraviglia, meraviglia, I don't remember in English. Marvel. 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 Yeah, thank you. Mm. <laughs> see. Well, it's a uh, uh, private joke. I think the new Bauhaus, uh, this question Roberto has uh, uh, um, proposed, it's uh, a little bit about the 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 way of um, the way of stay in the world if we if we uh, see the world in a projectual way uh, we should promote the design culture and i think this this uh, key aspect of the bauhaus uh, is not uh, uh, um, underlined in the in the european document the projectual and design culture and co-design and uh, design with the communities design with the professionals from design from designers architects but also artists have this way of being alive we all, uh, in uh, several aspects of our life we are not satisfied with with things like they they are we are always anticipating project, uh, projecting the the, the world um, of um, as as not uh, yet uh, came uh, and this design culture i think it's more important uh, in the 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 rural and peripheral, as you said, areas, because it's behind projects that we can connect with other regions with the same problems and we can learn to, 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 uh, um, uh, uh, to, uh, to solve the, the our the problems, our context, uh, dif uh, uh, difficult us to realize our um, our dreams, our projects, and I think this relation with utopia and with this uh, uh, way of uh, um, being in the world it's, it's essential to to in the conceptual designing of the, the Bauhaus, new European Bauhaus uh, um, projects. Yes, I think the, mo the most important thing is uh, how the architects and the artists can work together no? for making uh, in no innovative spaces and beautiful spaces no? in the countryside, in the rural and the, in the urban areas. No? But it seems that we have to to recover this spirit, no? To change uh, the the. I'm sorry, perdón, porque a veces me sale el francés y me lío un poco. Eso, because sometimes the hoy le lié, le lié en anglais, le lié the the site, the site, no? Oh, the site we we are living, no? Mm -hmm. Yes. What is your opinion about the new European Bauhaus as a project, as an European project? No? Well, actually, before even venturing my opinion on the project, um, just this idea of co-design, let's say, or the inclusivity within, you know, more beautiful, more sustainable, more inclusive. The in inclusivity component, I think, is crucial because it's also about 
approaching, I think, developing projects in more of a peer-to-peer -peer manner, a collaborative approach where, you know, as an institution, I think there's a responsibility that we almost decenter ourselves. We are not the source of knowledge only, and that if we are working with communities, so artists and architects working with communities is one thing, but I think also on, it has to happen at all levels. There has to be an institutional involvement as well where the institution is really inviting contributions and participatory actions. Uh, and yeah, kind of working in a more collaborative manner to generate projects that are, that have a relationship, that already have a relationship to those people. And you know, one, for me, one point of reference that I think maybe also evoke some of those ideas within the new European Bauhaus is the idea of idea stores, which is a project in the UK. Maybe some of you have come across them. But they're, they're kind of like community centers that combine um, a bookstore, a library, a coffee shop, uh, spaces for adult education and spaces that people can use for, for meetings and social gatherings and this kind of thing. And those were really developed through this process of trying to identify with a community what their needs were. And, but they, and then they then bring life to communities because they are very flexible spaces and, and people can use them in the way that they want and, and appropriate them for themselves. So I think that's part of that whole process is, is that sort of, that level of work. Yes, for me, the most important thing of the New European Bauhaus is uh, this, this vision no? uh, with uh, how in the future we have to connect, reconnect with the nature, no? and, and sometimes uh, at the, bueno, in, our, uh, in the societies we have uh, like some contradictions, no? and I think the New European Bauhaus is a way to, to reflect no? the, how we must work. And finally, the last question we have today is about um, all the, the European projects which are working with the nature, with the landscape, no? in an European landscape. It would be it possible to connect them and to work in together in a European or continental net, network? It will be possible because sometimes we know that center as, uh, centers as the, as the PATH, Montaña Magica, Montaña Magica uh, and the SIAP are in every country, no? Uh, Sweden, we, uh, we know a lot of them, no? But would it be possible to, to make, to, to inspire a network, no? For sharing information, for working together, uh, with the artist, it will be. It will be. Would it be a possibility to an opportunity to to this kind of artist, no, or not? What is your opinion? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would definitely say it would be an opportunity. I think there's so many different institutions working in different ways, but around similar issues, and not only just for figuring out how to do, let's say, art, art projects and community projects, but also even just within institutions thinking through ecological transitions and, and recognizing the impact that some of, environmental impact that the contemporary art world has, let's say, which is so based on movement, sort of frictionless movement between international cities. So I think even just, not just for sort of the programming side of things, but even just the, the structural elements of art institutions that are dealing with nature, how we address those issues as well, I think would be super helpful. It's not easy, uh, but if we have a, a little bit of memory and we can revisit, revisiting re, 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 the writings of William Morris, for instance, in the final, final of 19th century, and Morris um, writes about the the the. the, the change of the urban landscape and uh, the, um, the risks of environmental crisis avant la lettre. Uh, uh, um, one uh, uh, um, century uh, before. 
William Morris and other artists have this conscience. They are not listened at the, at the time. But I think um, artists have uh, done a lot about this, uh, 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 this uh, question, this uh, climate change. But um, we don't have the responsibility if we don't have the means because uh, we hear, uh, usually, we are in the political discourse, that culture and art is the solution for all the human problems. And perhaps <laughs> is the so culture is the solution for every <laughs> uh, problem of the civilization, of, of the humanity. But we don't have the means in the right hands. And there are different ways of uh, true art to alert and to, to, to communicate the, the climate change, change, the environmental crisis and other issues uh, very pertinent of these catastrophic times we live. But we should uh, uh, give the, the means for the makers to um, do this effective change, not only to use the art to propaganda. Yeah. Yeah. is one of the issues, very critical is issue, but uh, I left <laughs> let that with, uh, with, uh, with you. Uh, about the Bauhaus, there are one appointment, uh, simple appointment I, I, I would like to do. There are one thing about the Bauhaus that we, I, I, in the European context, don't uh, um, have conscience. It's the, the, the loss of the crafts in the, in, in the interior of the cities. When I was a kid in my uh, uh, um, neighbor, there was some, several crafts and people who can make a, a furniture, a, um, a piece of uh, clothes, and now we don't have this uh, li little industry in inter, inner the, the, into the, the, the cities. And I think this is a problem for our sustainability. This is also about Bauhaus, because the, the, if we consume, if you buy in the, in the region we, uh, when, where we, we live, the ecological uh, footprint, it's, it's lower. So a little an appointment about that. Yes, in, in the... The way to, uh, that you said before uh, about uh, William Morris, I think uh, after, <laughs> some, sometimes after, sometimes after, but uh, also uh, very, uh, I don't know, he, he saw this, this moment in the time uh, was Gideborg. Gideborg with the, the Société de l'Hospitacle, no? So, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, critic uh, was uh, not, not, not really understand uh, before, but now is, uh, is all uh, uh, right that, that, that you, what, what, uh, what there is in, in, this, that, in that text. So I think, I think that uh, our center are not uh, a spe spe spectacular, I don't know, spectacularity yeah. <laughs> way, no? Uh, so this is a, a, a real uh, uh, heritage that, that, that we, we can keep uh, safe and um, uh, and, and be experimental in, in our program, and not, not uh, um, uh, you say, 
um, formal in, a, in any time, not, not, not became a school. No, the, the museum are very, or, or center in any case, uh, are very uh, um, lucky because they are free from program, from everything that is institutional, no? So if, if we, we keep this, uh, uh, yes, like a like, like state no? <laughs> to, to do, um, to be uh, or, um, informal in our program, I think it is, is a, a, a big help also in this case uh, of uh, Imagine uh, the, a, a new Bauhaus in, uh, in our future. Okay, thank you. And now is uh, ahora es el momento de, de bueno de que preguntéis. Así que adelante, Andevan, eh, Marga. Sí, pregunta en español y hacemos la traducción. Arquitectura y del arte. Eh, yo llevo todo el día como que me falta algo y, bueno, yo no conozco en profundidad los proyectos, pero en, en vuestros proyectos artísticos, eh, ¿qué otras colaboraciones o qué otros diálogos tenéis con otros sectores? Y estoy pensando en la ciencia, en los científicos, estoy pensando en los colectivos ambientales, en el activismo ambiental. Eh, hay un divulgador español que se llama André Escrivá, que tiene dos libros muy recomendables. Uno es Aún no es tarde, claves para entender y frenar el cambio climático. Y otro es Y ahora yo qué hago, cómo evitar la culpa climática y pasar a la acción. Perdona, esto no lo traduciré porque no, es de, no, yo, lo de que, C2. Sí, sí. Y, <risa> Gracias. <risa> Entonces, eh, él dice que, que estaba un día en una clase de un científico, en una ponencia de un científico muy famoso del clima. Y el tipo estaba en una pizarra enseñando una curva del clima, de las partículas por millón, de la acumulación de carbono. Miraba al público como diciendo, ¿por qué no os horrorizáis? <ríe> y él escriba dice, es que en ese discurso falta emoción. La falta emoción, emoción. Emoción, no lo sientes. Quien puede emocionar es el arte. Claro, y de la emoción surgen los cambios y las actitudes para cambiar. Porque te puedes leer el, el informe del IPCC y te quedas igual. Sobre todo porque no piensas, en, no estamos programados para pensar en tres generaciones más allá de nosotros, que son los que lo van a pasar mal. Entonces, vuelvo a la pregunta. En los proyectos vuestros, eh, por ejemplo, en un, esto que llamáis eh, residencias artísticas, eh, ¿hay diálogo? Es decir, ¿podéis invitar a un científico a que dialogue con un artista? o a un activista ambiental eh, y que de ahí surjan otras conexiones. Claro, porque al final, si no es un diálogo, a mí me pasa un poco esto. Yo vengo más del mundo de la información y yo lo que veo aquí es gente que os dedicáis todas al arte, escuchando a otros que os dedicáis al arte. Entonces, ¿cómo salimos de ese bucle? Porque nos pasa a nosotros, ¿no?, que nos dedicamos a la información ambiental y tú vas a los sitios y solo hay gente ya convencida. Entonces, ¿cómo salimos de ese bucle? ¿Cómo... No sé si es una pregunta muy clara, sí, está, pero es que está... me, me pasa todo, llevo todo el día pensando, digo, ¿esto es arte está... para los artistas o arte? Sí. Y, o para los que nos gusta el arte. Sí, esta, esta cuestión es muy, muy importante. Bueno, luego también contestaré yo, pero voy a, voy a traducir. Eh, Marga says that eh, we are talking about architecture and the arts. Mm? at the morning, uh, now in decisions, no? But uh, she, uh, she thinks that uh, we need another dialogues with another professions, for example, uh, scientists and, for example, ambientalists, people, the biology, and the activism, no? It's very, very important uh, for us, no? And after talking about some books, uh, he, he knows, no? No voy a traducir los libros porque ya no me acuerdo, pero, pero it's very important. The question is how we can uh, transform more or less the society, no? Um, or, or transmit this information from the arts, no? If we are talking always from the arts to the artists, 
from the artists to the cultural centers and how we can exit of this ¿Cómo se dice bucle María? Que no lo sé. Bucle. ¿Cómo? Cycle, like a cycle. Yes, yeah. like a cycle. Yeah. How can, can uh, we uh, we exit mm. from this cycle, no? Cycle that artists from the arts, no? Yeah. How we can we communicate and integrate another another people, no? I will start to sí. Eh, primero lo digo muy brevemente en castellano y luego lo, lo traduzco al inglés. Eh, para mí ya se está trabajando, se está trabajando en, bueno, desde las artes en el tema científico, pero desde hace mucho tiempo. ¿no? Y desde luego, cuando estamos hablando de cambio climático, ¿no? hay muchas publicaciones que bueno, en el centro de documentación tenemos donde se integra realmente todo esto. Pero tienes razón en una cosa. Eh, existe mucha endogamia, ¿no? como en todas las profesiones, y sí que es necesaria pues, una mayor involucración ¿no? en todos los proyectos que aquí estamos. Eh, cuando hablamos de gestión cultural ¿no? en general, o de la cultura en general que tiene la creación, hay como tres esferas. Está la parte creativa, que son los artistas, está la parte de gestión cultural y la parte de gestión técnica, que más o menos resolvemos, más o menos sabemos resolver, pero luego está la parte de la mediación. La mediación, que generalmente es la hermana pobre de todo esto, y es a lo que te diriges tú. ¿no? Los, los programas de mediación son los grandes olvidados. Se necesita comunicar y educar mejor en la sociedad, que es donde tú y yo también estamos, Marga, en transmitir ese conocimiento. ¿no? Por eso es importante lo que hacemos hoy, hoy aquí, pero desde luego con esa idea de transmisión. I will translate a short translation. No? Uh, the, the, um, I have said that we are, we are yet working with the scientists, with the biologists. A lot of publications are reflecting this interaction between the science and the arts. No? And the question is that, on the whole, we have like three as first, no? When, when we are working in culture, we have the creation from the artists, we have the cultural management, mm? more or less are okay, more or less. But we have the mediation too, no? The, the communication, the education programs. And this is the, I don't know how to say, the, the poor, el hermano pobre, no? The, the poor... Um, the poor brother, no? In Spada, the poor brother of the, oh, yeah, of the okay. cycle, no? Yeah. And this is the question. How can, can we com improve no? this question, no? Orieta, for example, you are a mediatrice, no? Mediatrice, mm -hmm. in Francais. Monsieur, n'est-ce pas en anglais? Do you understand me? Yes, yes. Okay. I think, I think so. Okay. <laughs> but uh, I think um, I have uh, uh, something to tell you about uh, this uh, uh, connection with art and uh, science. Uh, was uh, so many years ago. In that, in that time, we, uh, we did a, a call uh, for uh, to the citizens of Torino uh, and, um, for. Um, for tell us um, uh, if they uh, saw the, uh, how do you say, um, uh, firefly, fireflies, fireflies, that, yeah. um, and um, so many people uh, uh, gave us uh, some uh, place where they, they, they saw that. And so uh, there was uh, some biologist uh, three, uh, one from Pavia, that is professor, and two or th three maybe, uh, they are, uh, they are uh, students. So the pool, uh, th these, uh, these uh, four people, uh, scientists, and uh, the artists, and the, uh, the other, other um, uh, figures of the PAV, we, we made a pool, and uh, we, we work about uh, this prog prog program, uh, maybe one year and, uh, and after. And uh, not, our, not me, but uh, the uh, biologist published on the um, uh, scientific review all the research. So and and and, uh, and they all and it's very important for um, for that you you tell before um, for the uh, uh, I would say uh, to how to speak 
speak about uh, the the, prob the scientist uh, mm, field like this, uh, but in a way, uh, poetic way, or maybe um, other way, you know, that is yes. called art. Yes, Marta has said the uh, the I word. Understand. Yes, okay. Marta has said a very important word that is emotion. No? How to to make an emotion to. Mm -hmm to people, to society, to transform uh, the relationships no? with, the, with the nature, the climate change, for example. Mm -hmm. no? And Alexandra? Uh... It's a pertinent question. Well, I don't uh, uh, arrive to think in English yet. But I think there are Portuguese sociologists who said um, all the knowledge system is a, a system of uh, todo el sistema de conocimiento es un sistema de desconocimiento. Uh, cuando uno se, se pone en una mirada muy disciplinar, como a partir de las artes, probablemente lo que interesa no es el conocimiento. Y es la experiencia y lo que pasa, incluso por las sensaciones y por el cuerpo. Eh, eh, todavía la cuestión de la arte con la ciencia que tenemos hoy es un paradigma de oposición que, que es muy reciente, porque hasta los principios de la taxonomía iluminista, la, la arte, el arte se, se, se miraba como una ciencia natural. Hay incluso textos sobre la relación de la acuidad, la capacidad de, de mirar. Por ejemplo, Foucault eh, lo, lo trabaja. Eh, y lo que tenemos hoy es que hay una hierarquía entre los saberes, que es, un, es una batalla entre dominios, de, entre, son, son dominios que luchan por eh, implantarse como eh, hegemónicos. Y la mentalidad científica y la razón científica no es más que eso. En Montaña Mágica hemos hecho una expedición a la Serra de Estrella con unos, eh, eh, con unos guías de, del Geopark que tienen una visión muy interesante sobre y cómo interpretan el paisaje a partir del conocimiento geológico. Pero hemos tenido artistas que han trabajado la superficie de, la, de la, la encuesta de la montaña a partir de, de hipótesis que han trabajado a partir de maquetas y de, de propuestas más experimentales que todavía son, tienen una razón por detrás, tienen sentido. Todo lo que vemos aquí, bueno, podremos incluso hacer radiografías eh, hacer un tratado de proporciones eh, matemáticas, matemático, sobre cada una de estas obras, pero eso no explica la obra. La, la obra es un conjunto imponderable y muy dinámico, de, 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 es un equilibrio muy, muy precario entre cosas. Y al sujetar el arte a, un, a una mirada científica, estamos excluyendo de nuestra, de, no, de, de nuestra relación todo lo que es específico del arte, o casi todo. Probablemente no he respondido, pero es un poco mi convicción personal, es que hay muchos mundos, hay mundos que son alternativos y que coexisten, y nosotros hacemos el tránsito entre mundos, para sobrevivir, pero no es que lo cre creamos, porque la cuestión de, de 
creo que es un, un trabajo muy, muy difícil, esto de la mediación, un poco como el chamán, que está con un pie dentro de la, de la tribu, pero que contacta con, con lo que está fuera de, 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 de la tribu. El mediador es un chamán, como el artista lo es también, porque está con un, 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 un ojo en, en su trabajo y hace este tránsito de conceptos, esta osmosis, donde se produce la experiencia directa. No sé si se si fue un poco allá, de, pero la mediación, bueno, abre puertas y yo creo que más do que fornecer respuestas, debe fornecer interrogaciones, dudas, porque, bueno, las respuestas ya sabemos que solo encierran artificialmente los problemas, porque todavía los problemas van mucho más allá que la, do que las respuestas. Bueno. Asatul. Uh -huh. okay. And Alexandra. Ah. No. Thank you. I, I guess... Um, I think um, the question is extremely relevant, because if we're just speaking in a closed room of artists and architects, then we are not helping anyone or not advancing anything. Um, and it's, it's partly a question of interdisciplinarity, which has been around in the art world, certainly, for a long time, and it used to mean, you know, inviting a dancer into a visual art space. But I think now it's more a question of, of understanding these different forms of knowledge, like scientific knowledge in relation to art artist, artistic knowledge that might be addressing the same issues from completely different angles. Um, at the Art Center, we have two, recently two residency programs, uh, one on the night sky in, in collaboration with the natural park in the area. And it's, it's an artist and an architect who were selected for the residency, but also they're meeting with different, different sort of bodies of knowledge, let's say astronomers as well as um, local people and things like this. And there's also a residency next year, which is for an artist and a scientist to work together. And it's the second edition of this residency called Art and Environment. And the previous one was around the issue of lichen. So an artist and a scientist created projects together about lichen. I don't know if that people know what lichen is in English. Anyway, lichen in French. Ça pousse sur les roches. It's both a parasite and uh, it's a symbiotic species that grows on rocks. Right. No, no, no. I'm sorry because no, no. Yeah. no I don't know. Uh, no, sorry. Um, but I think maybe also in addition to, you know, recognize scientific knowledge working in tandem with artistic forms of knowledge, there's also maybe thinking about indigenous knowledges and let's say indigenous populations and their relationship to the environment and integrating those lines of thinking, let's say, and those sorts of ways of understanding the world, um, similarly to, let's say, plant intelligences. So I think it really is a question of broadening our perspective and bringing in multiple voices mm -hmm. and sources. Thank you. And the last question, very, very, very fast, Maria. Uh, yes, Maria, we, we finish with you because ah, we it's have not a question. No es una, no es una pregunta, es justo. Si quieres lo digo en castellano y luego lo traduzco Eso. muy fácilmente. Very short, please. No, una palabra que ha, que ha surgido, que la ha pronunciado uh, Orieta. Uh, otra palabra que creo que es importante, se ha hablado de mediación, pues la poética, las poéticas. Poética de, po, de poiesis, de qué hacer, de los qué haceres en estos nuevos dinamismos del habitar. Del habitar, que es lo que nos dice la... New European Bauhaus, eh, con esta belleza, sostenibilidad e inclusividad. Uh, uh, it's just this that, uh, uh, a new word that it has pronounced Orieta, that is the poetics, poiere, poiesis, uh, poiesis uh, the, 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 the doing, the making, no? And I related with the beauty, the New European Bauhaus of these new dynamics of inhabiting, inhabiting Uh, uh, our m nature, our environment, our homes, all these dyna dynamics that through these poiesis that, that brings, brings culture and brings the art and culture. And I do think, creo que aquí se han reunido muchos diferentes perfiles. No estoy, 
no estoy tan, no es tan poco arte con arte, creo que aquí trabajamos desde diferentes vetas del, de la cultura y, y del arte. En esto estoy un poquito, creo que, es, que, es, que el planteamiento es abierto. Uh, I think it's not just art and art, we are working different ways. And just last thing, I want to, to quiero agradecer eh, las presentaciones que se han hecho, de, incluida la del CEDAN de esta mañana, de estos, ya, que ya conocía el proyecto CEDAN, de, de estos proyectos que no conocía. I want to be grateful to, to, this, to this, I want to be grateful to these presentations you have done of these projects I didn't know and that que me han transmitido realmente con las imágenes vuestras palabras uh, en diferentes idiomas lentos. Uh, they have transmitted me through your images and your words and your tone and your emotion. Uh, uh, I think uh, they have touched me. And so, thanks. Okay. Th thank you very much for your words, Maria. And, uh, bueno, we, we are going to finish. Um, eh, bueno, para, para mí lo primero, muchísimas gracias por, por venir. Ha sido una jornada pues, para mí muy intensa y espero que para vosotros también bueno, pues haya sido interesante el conocer todos estos proyectos. Este es un encuentro de iniciativas de arte y naturaleza en Europa. Pues probablemente, ojalá, podamos tener segundas ediciones, terceras ediciones, etc. Eh, a lo mejor no en el CEDAN, a lo mejor en otros lugares donde lo queráis promover, ¿no? Eh, por mi parte, dos cosas. La primera, esto ha sido también como, como trabajar eh, en la Torre de Babel, con muchas lenguas ¿no? que hemos tenido durante todo el día, lo cual pues, también lo hace interesante por otra, por otra parte. Y lo segundo, así a nivel anecdótico, creo que hemos conseguido también con la consagración de nuevos espacios pues el asegurar la distancia de seguridad, eh, las mascarillas y encima además hemos contratado una ventilación externa, como habéis podido ver, que también ha traspasado los muros, con lo cual eso ha sido pues interesante. ¿no? Y bueno, pues muchas gracias, muchas gracias, merci beaucoup, eh, thank you, mucho obrigado, molte gracias y bueno, pues nos vemos eh, en la próxima ocasión. Ramón, no sé si tú quieres decir algo para despedir muy brevemente. Deciros también a las personas que os quedáis que a las siete de la tarde, si no recuerdo mal, o a las siete y media, Eduardo, a lo mejor me lo dices, hay una inauguración de una exposición bastante interesante en la Diputación Provincial de Huesca, eh, del programa Visiona. Entonces, bueno, pues también os invito a que si os apetece ir hasta allí, siempre son muy interesantes estas exposiciones de, de la Diputación Provincial. Así que, lo dicho Ramón, si quieres cerrar, muy brevemente, porque Orieta tiene que coger un tren. Sí, yo sí. me excuso, bueno, me vado via. Me piace mucho, torniamo, ci vediamo. Aplaudimos ahora a Orieta. Bueno, acabamos ya y reitero las gracias por, por el esfuerzo que habéis hecho todos los que habéis venido, sobre todo los que habéis venido de fuera. El objetivo de la jornada era presentar el proyecto de Bauhaus, el CEDAN GO, que hemos venido a decir y las posibles eh, continuidades y posibles eh, eh, participaciones en los proyectos Misión de Aragón como como proyecto, intentar ser como proyecto Faro, de alguna manera hemos tenido la suerte de que el concentrar aquí a distintas personas ha facilitado bastante en estos días poder intentarlo y eso significa que uno de los eh, aspectos que nosotros presentábamos en el CEDAN GO y que creo que era fundamental a la hora de, de que se nos diera esa, ese partenariado, ese ser socios oficiales de la Bauhaus. Uno era conocer, experimentar ah, conocer. y el tercero que era hacer comunidad. Nos gustaría a nosotros que este encuentro también sirviera pues, para lo que se ha comentado esta mañana, que muchas veces pues, eh, se piden las, las opiniones cuando ya está todo hecho. Para nosotros sí que sería importante empezar a crear un grupo para el año que viene. Tenemos previsto hacer distintos encuentros de distintas 
cuestiones a otros niveles, quizá un poco más domésticos, un poquito más concretos. Y sí que nos gustaría pues, contar, igual que esta mañana se nos ha ofrecido el Colegio de Arquitectos y otras entidades, que a nivel particular o de las entidades que vosotros eh, representáis pudierais estar aportando vuestras ideas a cómo dentro de este marco de trabajar arte, cultura, arquitectura para eh, dar salida al reto demográfico pudierais ir aportando experiencias que nosotros luego pudiéramos transmitir a otros grupos de trabajo. Yo creo que Roberto, que tiene todos vuestros contactos, teníamos intención en un tiempo relativamente breve de hacer un formulario en la web y si no se os dirigirá le pongo en un brete, se os dirigirá directamente para que aquellos que, que lo deseéis tengamos ese contacto, podamos hacer esos encuentros virtuales o físicos. Y de verdad eh, yo creo que, que ese es el espíritu de la Bauhaus. El espíritu de la Bauhaus no es tanto en este momento hacer algo, sino cómo crear redes y reflexionar para que una vez que nos pongamos con, manos a la, eh, con las manos en la masa para poder hacer las cosas, eh, estas fluyan lo más rápidamente posible. Lo dicho, muchas gracias, contamos con vosotros y nos vemos pronto.